Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Miss Angler's Biology Classroom. I am Miss Angler, and in today's video, we are going to be looking at protista and their unique structures. Now, if you're new here, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe, and make sure to turn your notifications on as I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday from grade 8 to 12. Now, in this video, we are going to specifically focus on the formation of pseudopodia and how they are used to ingest food, as well as looking at osmoregulation and how contractile vacuoles assist the movement of water in and out of protista. Now, if you are not familiar with these structures that I'm about to speak about, you need to go back and look at my microorganism diversity video, which I've linked above, where I go over the general structures that we found in protists. For this video, I'm going to specifically focus on some things that amoeba have in order for them to form their pseudopodia, as well as looking at a contractile vacuole. Now, what's important to know is that when we look at a protist, and this is an amoeba in the photo that we have in front of us, you will notice that the outer layers of the amoeba itself seem to have um, different labels than we're used to seeing. For example, there is the ectoplasm, which is the outer layer of our um, cytoplasm. You'll also note, notice that there is something called plasmosol and plasmagel. And basically what that refers to is a thicker or thinner part of the cytoplasm. And the reason why we need these more thicker gel-like layers, or sol meaning more liquidy, is because we need the um, amoeba to be able to move and form its pseudopodia. And so this is the key part, knowing that the cytoplasm of a amoeba or a protist can be more gel-like or more liquid-like, solvent-like, it allows the um, solvent, the liquid part, to run into the area, and then the thicker part, the gel, acts as like the foot. And so we are going to look at how do amoeba go from having cytoplasm that's thick like gel to runny like water, how it goes back and forth between those two, and how they use those mechanisms to create pseudopodia, or false feet. The other structure you need to be familiar with for this video is the contractile vacuole, which is exclusively used for regulation of water in uh, protists. And that's because the majority of protists are found in water and they need to be able to regulate how much water is coming in and going out. Now, looking into pseudopodia formation, we need to break down the word. Pseudo means false and podia means feet. So we are creating false feet. And protists use this to move around, but they also use it to engulf their food. Now, it's really important to understand the basic internal cytoplasm structure of a protist to understand this process. Now, we've got effectively two consistencies of cytoplasm. The outside layer of the cytoplasm is a thicker gel, and the inner layer is a liquidy solvent, uh, or like a watery substance on the inside. And basically what happens is, if I want to move towards an object or just move away from something, so let's say I want to move towards this box that I've drawn here, what happens is I need to create a pseudopodia. I need to create a false foot. And to do that, we need to change the consistency of our um, cytoplasm so that we can move. So as you can see here, it starts off, and we always start off here. Step one, the gel is turning into a sol, in other words, a liquid. So what happens is the jelly-like layer on the outside gets a little more runny, and it runs down the middle. It's more liquidy. Now, because this is happening all the way around the edge, you get a part of our protist that is weakened. And that's where it says here the tip extends. And what that means is, is that all of this sol or all of this liquid cytoplasm is running forward over here. It's liquidy. And all the gel is moving out of the way. And so what happens is the tip extends and it creates a false foot or a pseudopodia. Then what happens is we can't just let the liquid run straight. We need to be able to keep this uh, consistent and form an actual foot. So as we get to the edge here and the liquid has run forward, you will notice on the edges it will become uh, a gel again where it says the sole, the liquid, turns into a gel. And so as you can see, it turns backwards and goes back the way it came. And so it becomes a more jelly-like substance. 
Now, the easy way I can sort of demonstrate this to you, or if you can think about it, is if you've ever played with bread dough or play dough, and if you hold it in your hands, and as you set it down on a table, you'll notice that it flattens out and it starts to slowly move and, and spread out. And that's a similar idea to pseudopodia in that when you allow the dough to spread out, it's forming these like edges that move outwards. Now, the reason why the bread dough doesn't continue to move across the table is because the bread dough is one big solid uh, mass. It's like a gel. But if we were to make it runny on the inside, like a liquid, we could then force the bread dough or the amoeba to move forwards. And it's this consistent effort of turning its cytoplasm runny so that it can move forward. It's more liquid, so it can run towards an area. And the moment it's moved a little bit forward, then it turns back to gel on the edges and it circulates again and again and again until we arrive at the object that we are trying to uh, move towards or if we are trying to move away from something. Now, this is quite a technical process. So let me show you what it looks like when we are engulfing food with pseudopodia. So step one, we have a food particle over here that we are trying to uh, engulf and digest. And so what you'll notice is the pseudopods are forming on either side. Here is one and here is the other pseudopodia. Now remember what's happening is the central part is more liquidy and the edges are more gel. And so what happens is it starts to run forward and it starts to engulf the food particle. And if you look at the next step, you can see here that the pseudopodia have run a little bit more forward and they're about to close off that area and completely absorb it. Now when you completely absorb it we call that phagocytosis. Essentially it is engulfing a substance into the cell and if you look a little bit lower down you can now see that the cytoplasm completely surrounds the food particle and we can start to digest it on the inside. Now let's look at contractile vacuoles. Now these are unique vacuoles because unlike vacuoles that we see in other animal cells or plant cells, vacuoles are used for storage, um, sometimes temporary, sometimes long-term. But contractile vacuoles are different because they don't plan on storing anything for very long. In actual fact, they're trying to remove substances, specifically water. And the reason for that is protists are found in bodies of water. They're in rivers, lakes, dams, the ocean. And because of this, if they don't regulate their water properly, they will burst and they will die. So the contractile vacuole is a unique feature to protists because it allows them to not burst. Now let's look at the basic steps. First of all, water is going to enter via osmosis. And this is be happening because of something we learned back in grade 10, where there's a difference in um, salt concentration. Remember, water is going to move around from a high concentration to a lower concentration. So water moves into our protist and because we don't want our protest to become too runny, in other words, we want the cytoplasm to be too um, liquidy, but we also don't want to drown the cell, which is very possible, all of the excess water is put inside a contractile vacuole. Now, sometimes a contractile vacuole is drawn like with a circle and it has some lines coming off of it. So you might see that in your textbook. You also might see a circle with like elongated edges that sort of like wisp out. Both of these are different ways that you can see them in tests and exams. Now, once we've filled it up with enough water, and so the vacuole has swelled, we need to get rid of that water because it's excess. We don't need it for anything. If we leave it inside, we run the risk of killing the cell. So what happens is the vacuole, once it's full, is going to move to the edge of the cell. And because the vacuole has a little thin membrane around the edge, that little membrane is going to fuse with the cell membrane of the protist. So there is the thin membrane of the contractile vacuole and it is fusing with the cell membrane. And all the excess water is bursts out and it's expelled into the surrounding environment. And then the whole process happens again. The um, vacuole will then close itself off as you can see and we start again over here where we put more water in. And this happens over and over and over again. 
Now, as always, I like to finish off my lessons with a terminology recap because all of these words can be used for your flashcard studying, which is the best way to study life sciences. Now, we started off the lesson looking at the generalized structures that we see specifically in amoeba. And we focused in on the ectoplasm. The ectoplasm is an extension of the cytoplasm. It is the most outer layer of the cytoplasm. It's the part that is right up against the cell membrane. Ecto meaning outside. Now that ectoplasm has two different consistencies. Sort of think of it like an uncooked uh, cake. The cake can be cooked on the outside, but the batter on the inside of the cake is still runny and liquid-like. And so just like you can have your cake slightly cooked on the outside and then runny on the inside, it's the same idea with amoeba. Their cytoplasm is slightly different in consistency. You have the plasma gel, which is the thicker outer section, and then the inner section is more liquidy, and we call it a plasmosol. This is important because every time we want to form a pseudopodia, we want the liquid part to run into the direction we want to form the foot. And then we want to make it thick once we get there so that the thick part, the gel, can form the foot that will pull the amoeba towards the object it's trying to go to or engulf it. And we call that pseudopodia formation or the formation of false feet. If we are engulfing food, however, so we're taking two of those pseudopodia and we stretch them around like little arms around the food that we want to ingest, we call that phagocytosis, which is basically engulfing the food and making it a part of the cell. We then moved on to the contractile vacuole, which is a specialized vacuole that regulates how much water goes in and out of a protist because protists are susceptible to bursting if they have too much water inside of them. Now, water moves into a cell via osmosis. It moves from a high concentration of water on the outside to a low concentration of water on the inside. And the word that we give this whole regulatory process is called osmoregulation or water regulation. Now, as always, if you've enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn your notifications on because I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday. So stay on track and I will see you all again soon. Bye.